Hey everyone, welcome to 5 Minute Fridays where we take 5 minutes to close out our week in the Word of God. Today we're going to look at the prophet Jonah. And Jonah is a super cool prophet because I think he's kind of like a mirror image of all of us uh, in that God, in the very first words of the book, calls Jonah to go uh, and Jonah says no. Okay, God says go to Nineveh and Jonah's like, absolutely not. Jumps in a boat, heads out, tries to run from God. The one that he even describes as being the God of the land and sea. He jumps on the sea to run from him. Well, God sends a storm, and the storm terrifies the sailors, and they ask Jonah, what do we do? Jonah's like, throw me off the boat. A very selfish request. Check out our sermon series from a few years ago to learn more. A giant fish comes up and swallows him. Woo, we all know that part. And Jonah, while in the belly of the fish, gives a awful, passive, non-responsibility accepting prayer. He doesn't repent. He doesn't apologize. He simply says, God, get me out of this. I'll do whatever you want. God has the fish vomit him up on the land. Very fitting for Jonah in this moment. And says again, go to Nineveh. And Jonah says, fine, let's do this. He goes to Nineveh. It takes days to walk around the city, but he does it. And he really phones it in with the message he's bringing. He doesn't say repent. He doesn't say this is how you can be saved. He just says five words in Hebrew in 40 days y'all will die. Y'all will be overturned. Your city will be destroyed. And yet this simple five-word message God works through reaches the king of Nineveh, and the king hears it, immediately issues a decree to all of Nineveh, saying everyone is to put on sackcloth and ashes. Everyone is to repent. Even the cows are to be put in sackcloth and repent. God sees their faithfulness and forgives them. And Jonah is furious. He's raging. He's so angry at this. He can't believe this happened. This is such an injustice. And he tells God, why did you forgive these evildoers? Why did you love these people? Why did you forgive this wickedness? And why did you make me come here if you were going to forgive them the whole time? Noah was so angry because God worked in a way he didn't expect. Worked in a way he didn't foresee. Worked in a way he hoped wouldn't happen. And then God asks him a very, very pointed question in verse 4. Is it right for you to be angry? And then he gives him an object lesson. He gives him a plant that kind of shades him from the sun. It was super hot. Jonah's just super psyched about that. It's like, oh man, this plant, it's so great. God then sends a worm. It destroys the plant. And Jonah just devastates. He gets even angrier. And he says, God, just kill me. All right, I'm done with this. And God again asks, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? I mean... Come on. And Jonah says, yes, kill me. And then God tries to help him understand, you knew this plant for less than a day, and yet you're this angry that it's gone. How much angrier would I have been for this entire city that I've known since the moment they were a thought, even before they were a thought in their mother's eyes? And that's the final word of the book. We never hear Jonah's response to that. God has the final word. But I want to take you back to that idea in our present day and age. Is it right for us to be angry? Absolutely. Because what Scripture tells us is is we are called to, to hate injustice. We're called to get angry at evil. You know, we're allowed to be angry about the shootings that happened in Buffalo, in Tulsa, in Uvalde, the one that happened right down here, Clackamas Service or Clackamas Town Center. Right? We are allowed to be angry at that evil. But Paul warns us in Ephesians 4, in your anger do not sin. And so there's kind of a, a shift difference. And what we actually see in Jonah is there's another way to sin in your anger, and that is to get so angry that the only thing you can think of to solve it is to kill yourself. Right? Also a sin. Also not the direction you need to be going. And so what do we do with this? You know, is it right to be angry? Yeah, at the sin, at the evil, at the wickedness. The problem is when we start to direct our anger away from the sin and onto the sinner. Because then we move ourselves from being what God has called us to be, which is mercy, loving, injustice, hating followers of God. And we then assume the position of God and begin to judge people who are just as guilty as we are. Is it right for us to be angry? Yes, but we are called to be angry at the sin, not at the sinner. We are called to hate the evil, but not hate the evildoer. 
And that's a hard line for us to walk right now. So how do we do that? How do we navigate that process? Well, the first thing is to get back in your word because the word is very clear. All right, we saw it in Jonah. We see it in Revelation. We're going to see it everywhere. All right, as we continue to go. In the end, God has the final word. In the end, God has the final word, meaning. All right, if you remember what happened when Jesus died and rose again, the final word that was declared is one day I am coming back to take all of you home with me and in that day evil will be destroyed. Evil will no longer have the opportunity to speak. It will be wiped out. God will have that final word and it will be a joyous experience. But what do we do here and now? We spend time in that word. We remember that. And like John was talking about last week, we talk with each other. We reach out to each other. If you need someone to talk to, reach out to us. You know, call us. Reach out at info at bslc.com. We'd love to talk with you. But most importantly, what we can do here is we can pray. We pray for those people who are impacted by these horrific actions going around in our culture. We pray for, for the, the, the survivors who are never going to be the same as they remember how horrific that was. We pray for, for those people who are now fearful that it's going to happen to them. And we pray and ask God, what is he calling us to do? Not to wipe out evil, because he's the only one who can do that, but what is he calling us to do co to combat it? How can we partner with others in order to, to help quell their fear, to help them know with certainty that as scary and terrifying and as horrific as this life may be here and now, God has the last word. In prayer, God can answer all, and he calls us to come to him with everything. And so what I would encourage you to do is if you're angry, good. Be angry at sin. Be frustrated with brokenness in this world. But in your anger, don't sin. Take it to God in prayer. Take it to others in, in conversation and community and, and be constructive with that anger. Spend time in your word and remember that God has the last word. And ask him to reveal to you how you can help others come to that realization that as hard as it may be in this life, because of our faith in the, the, the resurrected Christ, a day is coming when all will be made well and this won't even be a thought in our minds because all evil will be removed from this world.